Great. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I, I hope this meeting is not going to take up too much of your time, but if you have questions or you need something answered, please let's answer your questions here and now because I don't want you to have to worry about um, not getting your answers just because I want to give you enough time in your day to finish off your tasks. Um, so we're going to have a basic, the agenda with three items. Upcoming deadline for course completion is the 30th of April, then um, CCBY licensing. In the last week, I've had four issues come up with CCBY licensing. Please don't take it personally. It's not you. It's, it's throughout the whole consortium. So I just wanted to review with you guys, because you, if you're an instructional designer, you're basically the point man on your CHAMP grant for questions for CCBY licensing. Um, and if you don't know the answer, don't hesitate to ask me, because I would rather get it right the first time than have to continually recorrect or redirect the person who's, who's, who's doing it incorrectly or doesn't have the right information. Um, right now, I'm working with two colleges to try to get their CCBY licensing and the DOL attribution correct on their websites. Um, and that was one of the things I stumbled across because I was looking for something. I was just like, oh, oh my goodness, let me get this corrected. Um, so hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have their websites actually correct and in compliance. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, I believe the champ Chio um, joint meeting will be canceled April 30th and May 1st. So please don't hold those days open for me. If you have to schedule other things, please do. Um, because I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. Because Casey would prefer it not happening because she's afraid that we're going to have to pay money to CHEO to have that. And that was not the intent. Um, course development deadline um, is because um, of the grant. And your project lead should know that that is the Casey, I think, sent out an e, uh, thing on Basecamp, or it was probably in my head that all courses have to be completed to it. She would like them completed by April 30th. If not, she wants substantial progress on actually getting them into compliance. If you need help, please don't hesitate to send Peter I an uh, email message. The sooner, the better. <clears throat> and we can either, if you have content you need uploaded into your D2L, we can do that. If you need us to actually um, create HTML pages with text documents you have, we can do that. If you need us to look for something, just let us know. We can't help you if we don't know you need help. So please, just give us a call. Um, also, I encourage you to meet with your faculty frequently. Um, it's easier to duck a email or, but if you actually set up a weekly meeting with them face to face, it's harder for them not to actually keep on top of stuff. Um, and Pete and I are doing the exact same thing. I've already set up two meetings with uh, Pikes Peaks instructors <laughs> to finish off their classes. One of them is, um, supposed to be next week, and then the next one after that is the second week, uh, is the last week in February. So I've scheduled mine two weeks apart because I hate driving down there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm calling them or I'm doing something else to, to nudge them to get, get me content, or I'm having them go review stuff in the D2L shell. Um, I'm basically being a pest to them. Um, so does anybody have any comments on course development, deadlines, needs help? Just a question, Brenda, because I know it got a little fuzzy there for a while. Can you send out a revised list of who is responsible or who has assumed responsibility after someone else um, abdicated it for the various classes? I just know that early on, you know, like Front Range was responsible for XYZ and PPC was, and, and I think that got a little fuzzy, at least in my head. It's super fuzzy. Um, 
because CCD, like if you're counting on any course coming from CCD, don't count on it. It's right. not coming. Um, if you have a particular, I could probably look and see what, Red Rocks was not responsible for anything at all, uh, except uh, for your own courses. Yeah, we, were, we had those three Swiss turn classes and the two advanced inspection classes. Right. Those are yours alone because there was no one else in the system who was using those. Okay. You were kind of expecting five access to come from CCD, but we that is still that is that is a really sticky wicket right there because we have not seen any content coming from out of CCD. So right. if and you're I know gonna kind of been in touch with those guys, so um you know, off and on. So, I mean, I, mean, I think, you know, as, as well as the project process is going to go, we we're at least up to date on what they're doing or what they're not doing. But, okay, well, right. I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't dropping the ball here on anything we were supposed to be developing for anyone else. And Diana and I are still working on, or we'll continue to work on 102, um, just yep. because, you know, we offer it and, and want to get that one developed. But, okay. And Mac 250, right? Some, uh, 250. I don't have that Okay, one. then that's... Okay, then we don't have to worry about that. And the only other one that's truly, the only course I know for sure that is truly in question is EGT 205. I have one um, of my instructors working on that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and probably you, what, what you may have been thinking about from Red Rocks on those is I had thought initially that our, um, our Warren Tech faculty and then the gentleman that's teaching those classes, that, that as they were moving through the semester, they were going to be giving me content for those. Well, um, huh, yeah, that hasn't worked out so well. So <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to be of any help on those two. <laughs> okay, because what I do have is um, MSU created 3410, which is their geometric dimensioning and tolerances. And so we have that, but it, it has a lot fewer competencies than our EGT 205. However, and that's a done course, as well as um, we have an applied GD and T course out of, uh, Peter, you on the line? It looks like his headset's not, his audio's not working. Yes, I am. Oh, he was muted. Oh, yay. Oh, okay. Um, we have uh, the applied GD and T, and then we have something else. Can you refresh my memory? Um, I think that was it. It was the applied geometrics uh, intolerancing. That's the other one that we have. So, I mean, I think we have about two or three courses we can pull from to get 205 done. Um, so we can, um, and Diana, you're working on, one of your faculty members is working to get that complete. And if that's the case and you need anything, then we can, I can gather all that stuff together and send it to you. That will be perfect. Yeah, he's working on EGT 205 for credit and non-credit. Okay, so do you have a course map for either one of those? I have it for EGT 205, yeah. So if you send us the course maps, we will cherry, we, we, will, we also have a completed course, which I thought I had sent to you, but maybe not. It's always in my head. MET 130. Um, has... I'm working with Laura. I don't know if uh, she's another instructor. And um, remember the um, the website that I sent you that is from Wisconsin that they have the CCBY license? Yeah. She's taking a lot of her material from there, so she's working on that class as well. Because we have a full, we have a 60% build from Front Range from TAC-1 for MTE 130. Okay, it has to be that one, yeah, because Laura is teaching that one uh, for Collins. Yes. Yep, I'm working with her. Okay, so... Uh, give me more information. Do you actually have the D2L shell? Yeah. Okay, so you pulled it from the TAC drive? No. She okay. She gave me access to her personal one from last semester. Okay. All oh, right. For the metrology class? For the MET? Yeah. Just, okay. Okay. All right. Then we'll just let that go. So uh, if you send us the course map. Mm hmm uh, Pete and I can go into the applied uh, GD and T and the Metro course and see if we can pull any courses, any content that that might actually fit. Okay. And so you I do have. A, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Uh, so you only want the curse map for EGT-205, do you want the MT-130? Well, it sounds like you've got the same instructor that was working on um, the TAC-1. Well, no, it, it was actually a different person, but she took over her. She's the one who is teaching now. Okay. Well, I'll, I think you should just pull the MTE-130 that we had because it has a whole lot of material in there. Okay, um, I can check and it out. Yeah, and check it out. Okay. And I have a few YouTube videos that um, faculty here have provided me as well, so I can send those links to you also, Diana, if they're useful, fine. If not, fine. But yeah, that will be perfect. Have. Okay. Okay. Would cool. you send me those course maps when you send them, please, Diana? Yeah, I'll copy you. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, that'll work right there. And hopefully we can, all three of us, getting together, we could probably get that course in the D2L shell fairly quickly if you give us the course map. Do you have anything, I'm sorry I'm jumping around, on the EGT 205 Diana, yeah. do you have an actual um, D2L shell built? No yet. Okay. Because so, I'm putting everything together first. Okay. Okay. So, Do you have a, a, a unit outline yet, Diana? Yes, I'll, I'll you know, learn, yeah, I have it like a, sure. by learning modules, I have it like that. Perfect, that'll, that'll help me with what I'm doing here for these guys too, so, okay, awesome, thank you. Okay. So what I'll do within the next week, the next seven days, by a week from Friday, which is the 13th, I will actually build a D2L export shell with as much information as we can pull from Apply, GD&T, and MSU 3410. Okay. And I'll ship it back out to both you and Donna, Diana and Donna. And then okay. that way you at least have a structure to work with. Okay. Because Donna, you don't have EGT 205 built yet, right? No. Okay, yeah. So that'll at least get everybody with a D2L shell and a course map and some type of content. And then, Diana, you're free to modify it as you see fit and then just send me the final copy when you get done. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Yeah, I have 10 learning plans for it, so that's kind of like what you're going to oh see in my course map. Yeah, I have... Was this course okay. actually developed by um, Connie and Stephanie? Yes. Oh, dope. So uh, we have the introduction to GDNT, limits of size, form control, data systems, orientation controls, position tolerance, position tolerance application, calculating true position, run out controls, and symmetry tolerance, and profile tolerances. I have a question. Yeah. On your subject matter expert, your instructor, does he like that structure? I do not know. <laughs> I don't um, know. He yeah. has been basing um, his, the content that he's developing, he's, he's basing on that learning plan and on the competencies as well. The okay. Ones, you know. Okay. Because from the other three courses Pete and I have seen, that is like way off of what even the topical outline shows. Mm -hmm. um, so let me think about it. Um, I'll still send Donna and you a D2L shell. Okay. But it, the structure actually might change a little bit from your course map. But I'll recourse map it if I change the structure. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll send it to you for you to check it out. Okay, that sounds awesome. Um, Donna, you had some um, stuff, right? You want to talk about about course development? Um, I did. <laughs> well, I was you. I interrupted you when you were trying to talk, and I was just like, I'm getting back oh, to no, you no, because no. I interrupted. No, not at all. I just, I was just going to say that I had those YouTube videos. That, okay. Um, the, the, our faculty have provided a few links to some YouTube videos, so um, I will send those 
Just put them up in the ID base camp, and then everybody can pull off of them. Okay. Those are for the EGT class? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I believe there's somewhere in the TAC-1 that did a similar um, EGT-205, but it wasn't called EGT-205, and I just have to find it. I can't remember where it is, but I'll find it. Um, Pete, did you have any questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> no, that's, that seems fine. I just pulled up the uh, topical outline for EGT-205 on the CCCNS, so I think what, they, what you have, Diana, is just trying to follow that, and we'll just need to make sure that it's matching up with um, the 80% instructor-created materials. So just filling out those pieces. Yeah. So what is, I have a course map for that course. Um, the instructor's name is Frank Elwood, dated May 30th of 2014. Where did that come from? That's Pike's Peak, right? Yes. Okay. Pike's Peak took it over because they needed the course because Front Range pulled out. So they quickly put together a course map thinking they would have time to actually complete it. Oh, and then they didn't. Right. Okay. Which one is that one? It's the EGT-205. Oh, okay. And I mean, they have, they have a textbook that they were using and some reading assignments and all that kind of stuff in the content activities area of the course map. Um, but I don't know how helpful that is for anybody at this point. Probably not very. Can you put that up also in the ID uh, base camp? Yep, I can. I will try to do that. I'm sure I sent that's it to you, but I've totally I, yeah, forgotten I'm sure, it. I'm sure that's where I got it, it was from you, but... Um, okay. And we'll also make sure that we clarify all the core... There's these competencies for these. There's three or four courses, including the one from Metro 3410, that. Um, are very similar. They're almost identical. And we'll make sure that we match all that up so that way you're, we're not duplicating effort, um, that if we have material in one course, it can work in that competency in the other course. So we'll just uh, make sure we try to simplify everyone's task at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'm quickly looking up. EGT-205. Yeah, the topical outline looks a little bit different than what I remember. Okay. Ah, all right, so the next item on the agenda is uh, quickly, we are going to have a site visit. Uh, DOL is coming to monitor our grant. It will be the third week in May, your project lead should have been notified by Casey yesterday. Um, as instructional designers, you are basically charged with ensuring that everything, everybody on the grant knows where things are kind of are related to courses and CCBY licensing. Um, so I will resend out that uh, agenda that I had where just train your team that when they ask where your courses are, you say they're listed in the CHAMP playbook under projects. Um, all the courses are web enhanced, hybrid, and blended. Um, all of our courses are published to OER and have, and that the OER URL is posted on the CHAMP website on the playbook. Well, it's, it's in two places. It's on the playbook as well as, and I don't know if I'm going to, blur your eyes. Um, I don't remember if I have ever showed you the development that we're, uh, Pete and I's um, timeline for getting all the courses into OER that we actually can touch um, because of the site monitoring visit has been accelerated. So by the time we finish 
whatever courses have to be finished by April, hopefully most of our courses at some point in time will be up at in um, OER. So if you look on our website, uh, when you click on the Projects tab, you're going to see all of our cohort groups. Yeah. So our cohort groups are here. Electromechanical, we actually have some of these courses. I just haven't posted them. The one we've actually worked on the most are welding. You'll see when it turns orange, that means that it's going to actually link out to Skills Common. And every single course will have a course map, the course competencies, and then the actual cartridge. So anything that actually has a, a, a orange um, link means it's actually linked. In engineering graphics, you can see that I just started going down the AEC courses and then I started on the CAD courses. So when, if they say, where are your courses, can I take a look at your courses, you can be nice and say, why, yes, here is my master course in D2L, or you can say, We've all got all of our courses published to Skills Commons, you know, SkillsCommons.org. Here's all the links to it. Um, I would prefer you give them the OER URL for them to look at the courses, as long as they know the courses are there, and you you can explain, you know, the the red or orange highlighted ones actually are linked out the other ones we're kind of waiting on con content for. Um, my concern is if you show them a course you have in D2L because they're not educators, they might question how is this 80% of your course content. Um, but if a faculty member wants to go ahead and show them his courses, go ahead and let them. Um, but if, the, if you get asked that question, you point to the courses that you've produced and the URL. And that way it kind of distances you from um, them critiquing how much uh, OER material is in the course. I don't think. It's never gotten that far in an audit before until, unless they find an issue that we are not in compliance and they physically actually look at all the courses. And make sure you have all of your intellectual property lists up to date. That means whoever, like at Front Range, Jennifer Fryery Fry Fry yeah. has uh, been producing stuff. Can you check with her just to make sure that she is actually listing everything that she's created on an intellectual property list and that that material has actually been published to OER? Yeah, I talked to her on Friday when you sent me the email. Okay, but does, did you physically see her list? No, because um, honestly she didn't show it to me. I just told her what she needed to do and if she needed me to apply the or to put the license to whatever she's going to print or whatever she's going to give away, she just has to tell me. So what I would like you to do, and you can do it whatever way you want, it might be easier to go through Ruth, since Ruth is theoretically her boss. Have Ruth ask Jennifer for just, can I see your intellectual property list? Okay. That's it. Is Ruth in? I don't know if she's here or no. Is she? Um, yes, I am on the call. Okay. Hey. Oh, okay, awesome. So Ruth, could you do that? Just verify that that Jennifer physically has either on a C drive, your Commons drive, or someplace an actual um, intellectual property list. Okay, and what do you what are the fields you want to see on that? Uh well I can send you the one I sent out to everybody and the navigator. Basically what it is is let me pull up mine. I have like three of them. All right, this is the one that actually passed inspection from um, TAC 1. So I have an overview page on a spreadsheet that told where all my information was. It's like, okay, here's where I got the CCNS from. This is where the proposal was, and this is where reports are. 
Then I had OER of other, and this is what you were specifically asking me, Ruth. So I have the college in the year, whoops, they're, they're transposed. I guess they didn't catch that one. Um, the year it was produced, the college that it was for, the item, the uploaded URL length, and the type of OER it was. So you can see that CCCS produced a whole lot of uh, presentations, Google Docs and stuff like that. But then I started adding stuff in from CCD because CCD had fallen behind. So I have like their CCD Fast Start Reflections Accelerated Learning Community uh, PDF, and it was a booklet. So I published that out there. Can you um, send me that? Yeah, I could do. Do you want a blank one? one or do you want this one? <clears throat> Why don't you send that one so we can see the things okay. here on it? All right. And so I have like the dev ed courses, I have the energy courses, I have all the dev ed courses, the OER pages that Brenda created. Um, so I have them from all of the colleges that I produced HTML pages and I published them out for. So it, it gives us, it's the same thing. It has um, it has the college that it was produced for, the course it was produced for, where it was created, where is it actually hosted as for OER, and the date I actually created that that OER link. Um, and then there was there was also OER websites. I had created websites for colleges, courses, OERs, and then like if it was an actual bunch of web pages together, if it was a website, then I listed how many pages, web pages I created for that. So you're doing this for all of the information that's within the courses or all the stuff that's outside of what's in the courses? For the TAC-1, we, I came in halfway through TAC-1, so I had information all over that was not in D2L shells. So my very first task was to take all the individual little items because, and put them actually, publish them out. And then when I could actually build D2L shells, I then published that out. So what about if I have everything, like for my courses, if I have everything on D2L, I don't have anything print out or I just do a general one? I mean, I just, do I have to put it there or? You will put it. Um, your intellectual property list should look something like, mine. So I have the year I produce things, um, the item, the uploaded to URL link, and the type of OER. And then I have a list of, and then my next list, because these are all individual items, uh -huh. but all of my actual, I point back to if whatever I've done is actually back at the website right here. And then if they'll ask me about it, because remember you set up a uh, Skills Common yeah. So when you actually post to Skills Common, you actually have a, a whole submissions list. So I'm kind of waiting to actually pull all this stuff off of Skills Common until so I, until probably the end of March, I'll pull all of this stuff and put it in a, a, a page. So when I post stuff on Skills Commons, that's what I do for a, um, the Excel sheet. I put. I the would do this. I would say, okay, this is the year. This is the course. This is the OER URL, uh, and this is the type. So I would say that it's the year 2015. The course was <clears throat> COM 105. The ORL was – 
and then I would put the type as the course export cartridge. The course cartridge, the common course numbering, and then the course map. Let me know if you can actually see what I did. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I would do. Okay. Okay. And I can make you a page, but that's basically what I would do for my own college to do that. But since Pete and I are producing things for um, Pikes Peak, Lamar, CCD, Emily Griffith, um, anything that we can get our hands on, right, Ames, um, we're creating our own sheet because we're actually doing the work, but we're also then going to send the same sheet back to the colleges so that they actually have a record of it. Okay. That's why since you gave me MAC 100, and MAC um, 210, I'll go ahead and publish that and I'll send you this back so that you okay. actually have it. Okay, sounds because, good. Right, because your effort should be on creating your courses, not necessarily publishing to OER yet, but if I have the time, I'm going to give that to you. Okay, so do you want me to publish them on Skills Commons already or no? You. If it's in the TAC drive, yes. If it's in the TAC drive between now and March, Pete and I will take care of it. Okay. After March, it's going to be up to you. Okay. If it's if if it's actually here, if I upload it to the TAC drive, Pete and I will take care of it. Okay. Yeah, you already posted it. I think you told me. Mm hmm Yeah, Mark One Hundred One is there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mac 101 is there and 201. Let me see, date modified. Yeah, 201 are up there. Yeah, yeah I'll Mac take care of that, and I will send you back a spreadsheet that tells you that exact information that says the um, the the year, the type, the course, that kind of stuff, and what it contains. Okay. So to get back to your original question, do you have to actually publish out every single item in a course? Absolutely not, because you've documented the fact that it's a course e export file with additional information put on it. OK. However, for Jennifer, Jennifer doesn't have things in a nice tight package like a D2L export package. So if she creates a flyer, she has to do the whole thing, the same thing for a flyer. That I, that she, somebody, whether you teach her how to do it or you do it, um, ha, it has to go up into Skills Common. Okay. So if she makes a brochure, if she makes a flyer, if she makes a business card, if she makes whatever, a presentation or a handout, um, then it has to actually be published to uh, the Skills Commons. Okay. And someone, either she, ha I tend to give responsibility to the person who actually created the items. Pete is kept keeping a separate list than I am. Um, and so I usually, the person who creates the document, puts on the CCBY license, and actually publishes out to the Skills Commons site. Um, but since I'm the default instructional designer for Pikes Peak, I'm doing all of their coursework, but Linda Raines, their navigator, is publishing everything out to OER for herself. OK. Did that clarify everything, Donna and Diane and Ruth? Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah I think I'm good. I think so. Okay. Yeah, Diana, you'll work with Jennifer on that to help her with that. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, so I need. Uh, I have another question now that we're talking about the license. Um, so the last time that I talked to you, I think I understood it right, but just in case I'm going to ask again. <laughs> um, so when I create a CCBY license for my courses, 
is it has to be a general one for the whole course or I have to like put one for each item that I have? Okay. We've come across this exact same question before and it kind of depends. Um, if the students are going to access everything from the D2L shell, then you're great. Just license the D2L shell like this. And I think I've showed you and Donna it before, but maybe Ruth hasn't seen it. Um, yeah, I don't have the visual. Yeah, here, here oh, is... Uh, Ruth doesn't have any visual. Yeah, okay. I don't have visual, so... Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so we'll just pretend. <laughs> We're pretending now. Um, for MSU, we have the news item that says the CCBY license is right there, the very first news item, as well as the DOL disclaimer. And then when actually you go into the content, yeah. inside uh, the actual Start Here module, the very first page they click on is the CCBY license and the attribution again. Yeah. And then that's all you need to do. However, well, they're gonna be printing something out. I have to do it on the who, of the on the footer, printer. right? Exactly. If your instructors are not having the students access that material and printing it out themselves, if they're gonna print out that whatever cr they created, it needs to actually have a CCBY license and a disclaimer in the footer. Only if the instructor is printing it out, because if my students, let's say, they go home and they want to print something out, a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, it doesn't have to have it? Uh, with usually presentations because you're, are you nesting your presentations inside D2L or are you just giving a link? No, I'm nesting them. Then you probably should put the CCBY license and attribution on the very last slide. Okay. Yeah. If you, it, we are overcoming that by putting our presentations out on SlideShare and we CCBY it out on SlideShare um, because it's much easier that way and then just link to that presentation. Because then, you, then you're, you're covered both ways. It's not only in the course, if, if they print it out or if somebody else grabs it from the Internet, it's, it's CCBY licensed. So I have instructions for the labs that they have to do um, whatsoever. Um, if they want to print them out, I mean, they are on D2L, and the instructor is not going to print it out. But if it's the choice of the students to print it out, do I have to still have to put the license on it? or No, no, because there, there's a big difference between the student actually printing it out for himself off of a D2L shell that's already licensed mm -hmm. and the instructor printing out a master core, a master lab sheet, and handing it out to the whole class. Okay. Okay. Because the thing is, most likely the student is printing out one copy and he's going to physically use it right then and there. Whereas yeah. with an instructor that prints off 30 copies, he might only use 18 copies and those other 12 copies are floating out there and need to have the actual CCBY license on there. Okay, got it. Got it. Um, so the CCBY license clarification, make sure everything is CCBY um, that we produce has to be CCBY, including a website, which, excuse me, I'm trying to find the thing that came up this week. Ah, let me get into my, um, this is the one CCBY license I'm struggling with, and I will show you um, trying to get it right. Um, this is Lamar's website that they built with Champ Funds, so that's fine. They can build a website with Champ Funds, but right now they put in the CCBY license at the bottom of their page, however, it doesn't have the DOL disclaimer on it, so it technically it's in violation. Mm. So their concern was, well, 
it was such a big page they couldn't get the DOL license on it. And, I mean, the DOL disclaimer on it. And my suggestion to them was the license they actually have here is in the same uh, size font as their actual wording of their page, that they needed to reduce the size of the license to probably a, a size 8, and the DOL disclaimer will fit in there. <clears throat> so that way, when they get the monitoring visit the third week in May and they say, okay, let's see your website, it'll have everything on there. Because even though it's in, in much smaller type, that's okay. It'll, it'll actually be on the website. Um, so I'm waiting to see what their webmaster is going to come back with. Um, so, I'm sorry. The website I created, is this something like just for machining or just for the grant? Is it part of their college website? It is now going to be part of their college website. They created this welding option. They, before, this is the actual preview site. Um, but before, it was under occupational programs. Let me see if I can get it. Um, so I'm questioning, like, so there's a machining page on the Front Range website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Machining machine program, explaining classes, you know, all of right. the standard information. Are you saying that needs to be licensed? It was not touched by grant funds, correct? It was built prior to the CHAMP grant. Correct. It was built by marketing. Right. So it was not touched by grant funds, so it does not have to have the CCBY licensing for it. However, Lamar didn't have a welding page. They had like a welding, this isn't even it. They had a welding, like all it said was Associate of Applied Science, and it just said a couple, it, none of these pending, pending, pending approvals were there. So what happened was Kelly Circle, is it Kelly Circle? Kelly Gaines down at Lamar started redesigning the website because she's paid with grant funds. She's touched the website and it now becomes touched by grant funds because her salary is there. And so it, then it has now become needed to be licensed. Okay. Because Kelly's working on this, actively working on this. It now, because she's a salaried employee under CHAMP, has to now become uh, licensed. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have any other CCBY licensing questions or concerns? I'm good. Okay. Um, I had one thing uh, uh, before Donna, and I. I I think this applies also with Diana, but may, on just a check, because one of the issues with the navigators reaching out possibly to high school students, and I think at Red Rocks this is much more of a concern just because of the tie-in there, but it, just as a check to see that the material is being published or being created, keep in mind if it's reflecting or directed towards high school students that we're not supposed to be doing that. So. We certainly have to license and publish all the stuff that's being created for the CHAM dollars, but make sure that you're checking that as well, just so we know and we can flag it and understand that we have to address that issue if it's being directed towards high school students, because we can't be recruiting them. Oh, we cannot? Not she, wait, wait, wait. Step back a little bit. What, he, what Pete is saying that I'm clarifying is that if you have produced a flyer on your program with CHAMP funds and it's licensed by CHAMP, high school students can access that material, no problem. But the grant funds and anything associated with the grant funds cannot be used to recruit high school students at all. So you can't do outreach efforts with a, navigate, a CHAMP navigator to high school students. Does that make sense? Yeah. High school students can be in your program as dual enrolled, concurrent enrollment. That's awesome. We can count them as participants, but you cannot actively send a CHAMP navigator to a high school to do recruiting 
or anything like that. That, that right there will get you a huge X mark on a monitoring visit. So, you know, attending career fairs at the high school, absolutely not. If a high school student comes into your college and you pass out CHAMP literature, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Did that, does that make the, Pete, did I clarify your distinction? Yeah, I think so. And, and if it's something that, I think the biggest thing is that as those things come up, if you're noticing them, pass them on to us so we can, we can all take a look at it and see, okay, how's this, does this actually violate what we're supposed to be doing or not, if there's a question. Because it's come up quite a bit with the navigators as we continue to talk, and, it's, um, and so that, that's just been a, an ongoing issue and a, and a point of confusion that we've had to clarify many times. And as we're actually licensing their products, that's another check that we can just verify whether it's in violation or not of what we're supposed to be doing with the CAMP dollars. So can we have students from high school visiting our shop? Mm -hmm. Um, yes. We're giving them information about the program. And you hand them specific uh, front range machining certificates, front range uh, AAS machining pamphlets, absolutely. Go ahead and hand those out. But you can't have a pamphlet that says, are you graduating from high school in June? Come join our welding program. Come join our machining program. That is a direct violation of the grant. Okay. I mean, you could have that if it was produced with uh, general fund dollars, absolutely. Um, okay. But you can't spend grant funds on that type of material. Okay. And I don't think you guys have that up there, but I'm not sure because I don't know everything about your program. No, we're being pretty um, cautious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we've only run into two two really big violations that we've had to tell them they can't use the material or they have to repay, um, somehow repay it out of uh, other funds. And that only happened, I think, in the last month. Um, is there any other questions? No. Okay, cool, beans. Um, so this was, again, uh, showing um, the, Lamar Community College has the exact same news item as well as it's in the course, um, and the fact that the CHEO Champ ID meeting was canceled. I, I, I truly believe it's been canceled, but I'll let you know. Um, and then the final in May? Yes. Okay. Um, May, April 30th to May 1st. I think yeah. it's been canceled. I think, canceled? Yeah, I think, well, CHEO I think is still going to go on, but I think the Champ ID, Casey said that we are not going to participate. Okay. It was a question of funding. We could not justify funding that because we had CHEO people there. It was a mixing of grant funds. It was, what do they call it? I can't remember what they call it, but it was, it was, it was not going to happen the uh, with CHAMP funds. Yes, that's it, the planting. Um, so there's that. Um, and do you guys have any questions? I'm sorry I ran too long. Um, I had meant to have this only 30 minutes. Anybody else have any questions? Donna? Um, can you just, can you send me the link to where you were on the CC, CCCS website that eventually got you out to the OER site? Um, you said when you were talking about the... The, the Skills Commons. W right. W. And I mean, you're I know meeting. how to get the skills commons, but you, you got there some way through the CCCS site? No. No. Oh, okay. well, theoretically, yes. So if you're on, if you're on the projects page and you actually click one of the hyperlinks, it'll take you directly to that course in skills commons. The TAA Champ projects page. Okay, I was on the research yeah. page. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, it was the projects page. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about it. So I owe Front Range the um, OER spreadsheets. Yep. And then I owe, Donna, did we cover up the, did we um, fix 
your question with the links, or do you still want me to send you the Skills Commons link? No, we're cool. Okay. Ruth, do we owe you any other uh, information? No, I think we're good. And then up in the CHAMP ID base camp, we should be seeing the EGT 205 course map. And then Pete and I will work on. Oh, do you want me to post it? I thought they would. Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah, it's easier that way. Anybody in the group can actually just look at it instead okay. of actually doing it through email. And then Pete, can you correct me? What did I commit to by next Friday? <laughs> Creating a D2L course shell for EGT 205. OK. <laughs> Okay. I need a keeper. <laughs> yeah, exactly, 205. And poor guy, he's sick and he's attending anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm like really a taskmaster, man. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so when we get those uh, course maps, Pete and I will actually by next Friday have an actual D2L shell. Um, we'll go ahead and post it in the TAC drive and then let you know it's there. You guys can take it back to your own colleges and continue to modify it and revise it. OK. Cool. I think that's it. I don't think we have anything else. All right, until next time, um, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or concerns or you need me to do something. Um, because since we're all in this boat together trying to get these huge course loads completed, um, don't hesitate to uh, call for help. OK, thanks. That's it. Sure, you guys have a good day. You too. Bye, everybody. Right. Bye.